Hi guys, welcome back. If you are confused between extension ledger and non-leading ledger in SAP, then you are not alone because there are two powerful tools in our financial reporting available in the S4 HANA platform and they serve very different purpose. So in this video, we are going to discuss between the difference between your non-leading ledger and extension ledger. If you have not checked my previous videos on extension ledger, you can check those. I already prepared three videos. One is the concept of extension ledger and two ca use case on extension ledger. One is your adjustment and another one is predictive accounting. In this video, I will break down the difference between your non-leading ledger and extension ledger. Before we proceed further, let's understand what are the different ledgers are there in a very uh, high level. So if you'll check this VPT, you can see here, this is my leading ledger. So what is this leading ledger and why we are using it? So leading ledger or our primary ledger is used for our financial transactions. So the leading ledger is also linked with my all the sub ledgers like your customers, vendors. So that means you can say for our main purpose or for main operation purpose, we are using the leading ledger. And this leading ledger is default for every company code. Now in this case, uh, you can see uh, in every client, you will find the leading ledger. So this is my leading ledger 0L. That is my leading ledger and it is linked with one accounting principle. And if I have four different company codes are there, so for all these four different company codes, the default ledger will be the leading ledger. So along with this leading ledger, we have also another category of ledgers are there, or you can say parallelly with leading ledger, we can use other ledgers. So those are your non-leading ledgers. Non-leading ledgers are parallel ledgers. It is also standard ledgers like your leading ledger, but and it is also used for your statutory requirement, means for, for some legal requirement and for additional reporting purpose. It is going to allow our business to maintain its financial records according to your different accounting principle. Like the previous one, we have seen that, let's say IFRS you have assigned with the leading ledger. So this one is assigned with my leading ledger. That is my primary ledger. Plus we have a requirement of US gap. We have requirement of some tax reporting. So in that case, parallelly with my leading ledger, I can use multiple non-leading ledger so that parallelly we can maintain our books of accounts and every non-leading ledger we can assign with different accounting principles. And what is the restriction or what is the uh, number of restriction, how many leading non-leading ledgers we can use with and uh, along with our leading ledger. So there is no such restrictions, but non-leading ledgers also going to create duplicate issues. So that is why we have to initially plan that how many non-leading ledgers we need for our additional requirement point of view. So if I'll try to understand the characteristics of our non-leading ledger, it is like leading ledger we are going to customize for our different accounting pr uh, principle purpose and it is going to store our separate data along with our leading ledger. So that means parallelly we are going to have two different ledgers that is our leading ledger and non-leading ledger and both are your standard ledgers. Now coming to our third category of ledgers. So those are your extension ledgers. So an extension ledger is also one additional ledger we are going to add with our company code for our additional reporting. And in this case, like your non-reading ledger, it is not going to generate any duplicate data. And always you will find the extension ledger is going to uh, reside on one standard ledger. Like if we take this example, so this will be my standard ledger, let's say primary ledger 0L and I'm going to have one additional ledger, for example, let's say N1. So now N1, I will use for a specific purpose. And when you are going to decide your base ledger, so that can be your leading ledger or non-leading ledger. That means we can say that it will be our one of the standard ledger. And it is not going to store the full data like your non-leading ledger. So that is why here the benefit is we can only manage with the difference postings or known as your delta postings. So that is another uh, advantage of your extension ledger. Right? So this we can use with, as I said, on some uh, specific areas. So you can use on, on predictive accounting. So you can check this video. Already I uh, use this extension ledger for predictive accounting. We can also use this one on CO adjustment. You can check this video, the use case for the CO adjustment. So uh, you will get more information on this. So that means for a specific purpose, we are going to use extension ledger. And the main important area here or the benefit is here, no duplication of data. So that is why companies always prefer to use extension ledgers if 
for a specific purpose it is going to fulfill our requirement so for a specific need for a specific reporting need this additional ledger or this uh, extension ledgers will be uh, there now if you are going to do a quick comparison between our non-leading ledger and extension ledger you can see here the uh, both we are going to use for parallel reporting purpose so uh, uh, this is my non-leading ledger and this is my extension ledger so this one we are using for parallel reporting this is also parallel reporting but as i said it is used for a specific purpose so this one we are going to use for predictive analysis purpose or for any uh, like you can say simulation accounting purpose here you are going to have full posting that means as if like a normal operation document whereas in case of extension ledger it will be the delta postings and uh, it is going to use for your statutory requirement or your like you can say uh, a primary books just like a normal primary books of account purpose we are going to use it like for example we have operation as per accounting standard one or ifrs and other accounting standard us gap so in that case we can use both leading ledger and non-leading ledger together but this one for a specific purpose we are going to use it this is independent ledger like your leading ledger so you can take two different fiscal year variant here in case of non-leading ledger so your leading ledger fiscal year variant will be different and for non-leading ledger fiscal year variant will be different right whereas your no, uh, your extension ledger is not like that so always you will find the extension ledger is going to take the value from your underlying ledger so if you have created extension ledger on top of your leading ledger so whatever the fiscal year variant you have assigned with your leading ledger same is going to be your fiscal year variant for your no extension ledger so that is one limitations you can say so here we are going to have full post uh, postings or complete posting whereas here we have the delta postings so in short we can say companies with legal requirement for reporting purpose they are using non-leading ledgers whereas for uh, specific area operations or for delta postings we are using the extension ledgers so let's understand uh, one practical example uh, so that you will get more clarity on our non-leading ledger so to get the idea about uh, uh, leading ledger and non-leading ledger let's take a practical document so i'm going to uh, take here asset explorer aw01 and uh, let me take a document uh, asset here doc asset number 1000 in this particular asset uh, or let's change asset number 1001 so in this asset here i have uh, configured or activated different depreciation areas and every depreciation area is linked with my different ledgers so this is a depreciation area 01 what is the asset value 16200 and uh, if i will change my depreciation area then it is 17950 this one is linked with my primary ledger that is my leading ledger and this one is linked with my non leading ledger different accounting principle different ledgers are there to support this information so let me show you the document so i will search my document here asset related document and i will not pick here the ledger only i mean leading ledger only let's check this document so what is my accounting principle ifrs Wh which ledger is linked with this leading ledger and what is my asset value 16200 same is available here 16200 this is my asset data this is my ledger data right so this accounting principle this is my primary ledger and it, this is my value now if i am going to change my accounting principle accounting principle change a local gap ledger also changed this is my non-leading ledger and asset value also or ledger value also changed 17950 which is linked with my depreciation area so in this way we can use both the ledgers leading and non-leading ledgers for your parallel reporting now if you understand different challenges between all these ledgers so first let's uh, understand the benefit of your benefit and challenge of your extension ledger benefit is lightweight because it is not going to generate any duplicate data so that is why that is the benefit of extension ledger and it is also going to give the data related to real time analysis you created the sales order immediately you have the projection reports are available with reference to extension ledger and simultaneously challenges with your extension ledger it is specific for uh, it is used for a specific scenarios it is not going to replace your standard ledger it, it can't replace your full ledgers like your non-leading ledger 
Similarly, if you'll see the non-leading ledger benefits, it is just like your leading ledger. So we have the full flexibility for your statutory compliances and challenges already multiple times I told you, it is going to generate duplicate documents. So that in that case, which one, what will be the conclusion, what we are going to do or when, uh, which ledger we will prefer. So if we'll wrap up these things, then we can say the non-leading ledgers are ideal for your statutory requirement point of view for compliances, whereas the extension ledger we can use for any specific purpose or for any specific reporting requirement point of view for data posting point of view. So first we have to understand their use to uh, what are the different ledgers we can use in a particular implementation and accordingly you have to discuss with your business. After that you will take a combination of your non-leading ledger and extension ledger and what about the leading ledger? Leading ledger will be default. So by default when you are going to create a company code in your S4 HANA, so by default leading ledger will be there. Then you need to think how many non-leading ledgers we are going to take or how many extension ledger we are going to take. So in this video, we did a quick comparison between all these ledgers. If you have any query, feel free to mail me or in add in the comments. Thank you.